going to want to show all the information that I'm going to send to you. So what we have to graph here is f of x equals 1 half secant of x. So the main important thing I want you guys to understand is remember that secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine of x. These are part of our reciprocal identities that we talked about and we kind of worked with. We remember that these are reciprocals of each other. So therefore, um, this can be the same thing as 1 half of 1 over cosine of x. Right? So what we're going to be able to do to graph this, to graph the secant function, what I'm going to do. Good morning, Mandarin High. Teachers, please read your email regarding Mentoring Monday and send those students to the Media Center at this time. Again, please send all mentees to our Mentoring Monday sessions to the Media Center at this time. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Okay, so there's a couple things that we look at as far as determining the important points to graph, um, to graph our uh, trigonometric functions. Okay, so to graph our trigonometric functions, we like to start with finding the amplitude, the period, the x scale, and the start and the end. And there's just little kind of formulas, expression that we use to find this information. So for all of your graphs on all of your work that you do on a test, a quiz, or homework, I want you to be able to show me all this information. All right? Even if you don't have to show all the work that I do, why you got it, you can easily explain, show all this information. The amplitude, remember, is the absolute value of A. So in this case, you can say it's the absolute value of 1 half, which equals just 1 half. If you just want to write amplitude as 1 half because you get used to this, that's fine. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, where b is our coefficient of x. So it's just going to be 1. So our period is just going to be 2 pi. Now remember, the amplitude is going to be the height of our cosine graph uh, between the maximum and the minimum. And the period is going to be the distance that it takes for our graph to complete one cycle. The x scale, which was on your quiz, remember, all you got to do, there's four critical points we worked about. So just take your period and divide it by 4. So we have pi halves. Then the just take your period, divide it by 4. And that's going to be the scaling that we're going to use on the x-axis. It is the same thing. That's what I've called it before on other videos is like critical points. But it, it, what it means is like it's the critical points, but it's the scaling, the, diff, the distance between the um, critical points. So then we have the start and the end, all right? And the start and the end, remember, if there's any kind of phase shift, that's going to affect how we're going to graph our initial period. So all we do for that is we take whatever's inside of our function, which was bx minus c. In this case, we just have x. So for our sine and cosine, we're just going to set those equal to 0 and equal those to 2 pi. Well, since I have no changes in my period or any changes as a phase shift, my start and my end are going to be the exact same as the parent graph. So let's go ahead and graph this. And I'll start at x equals 0, which will be my y-axis. So we'll say you know, x equals 0. And then I'm going to have four critical points, 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll go in the negative direction as well, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then remember, our x scale, or critical points, was pi halves between each other. So that means my first point is pi halves, pi, 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. You can also go in the negative direction. Okay, So now you go on and graph all these points. Now remember, since secant is a reciprocal of 1 over cosine, we're going to graph the cosine function first. Now remember the amplitude is going to be 1 half. Usually when we graph the parent function of cosine, we went all the way up to 1 and all the way down to negative 1. Right, because the amplitude would have been 1, which is the half distance, which you can see the max and the min was the 1 to negative 1, which means the total distance was 2. Half that distance was 1. Well, now our amplitude is only going to be 1 half. So I'm only going to go up to 1 half and down to negative 1 half. So what we're going to do is I'm going to graph the cosine function to show you how to do this again. So our cosine function, remember, started at 0. Then it went to its next critical point, down. Up, over there. 
So the cosine function with an amplitude of 1 half is going to look like this. If we just kind of continue the graph, it can, can continue that way. All right. Now, I explained in my videos on why we're going to do the asymptotes, but I'm just going to kind of go through the quick, quick road for you guys to kind of get this video um, going along. If you guys think about it, if I look at the cosine, the cosine value right here of this graph, the cosine's value is what? What is the, what is the y value, the function value, the output value right here? x is equal to pi halves. What is the function value, the f of x or the y equal to? Zero. So if I put 1 over 0, can you divide by 0? No. So therefore, every x-intercept is going to be what we call an asymptote. So you're, for every x-intercept, so you're just going to find all the x-intercepts. Because at each one of these points, my function cosine of x equals 0. So therefore, the, if you put them as a reciprocal, they're all going to be undefined. So we're going to write them as asymptotes. So for every x-intercept of your cosine graph, you're going to make an asymptote. Well, remember, asymptotes are lines that your graph is going to approach. So that means my secant graph are going to approach these asymptotes. So how are they going to approach them? Well, when we look at the point, what we'll notice is each the maximum and the minimum is actually going to be the same point on our function uh, for secant. And how they're going to approach the graph is curves are going to be very similar to parabolas. They're going to be just going, going down and approaching your graph. So if you guys can just think of it in a very simple form, graph either the sine or the cosine, find the x-intercepts, create your asymptotes, find the max and the mins, and um, create kind of parabolas approaching your asymptotes. Then the last step is to go back through and erase the cosine graph. And there you go. That is 1 half secant of x. Any questions? Yes. Colton? No? No. Does that make a little bit more sense? OK, good. That's a start. So we can start somewhere.